say no or maybe or they're in infancy when they were around but in this episode in my remember the congress series here we are up to episode number eight we'll talk about the calgary centennials and i did wear my calgary hitman gear as a couple years ago one of my inspirations for doing the remember the calgary series goes back to the calgary hitman Corral series where they were rebranded as the Calgary Centennials for one game as this was the first team major junior hockey team to represent Calgary and now in the modern Western Hockey League and the other interesting thing we'll talk about is I will talk about the franchise journey as if you follow my videos that the Calgary Centennials franchise is now the current Tri-City Americans based out of Kennewood, Washington. The franchise actually had a couple other stops before settling in Kennewick, Washington. But the Calgary Centennials, their first season in 1966-67, actually was called the Calgary Buffaloes. And I could not find a logo for the team that represented the Calgary Buffaloes before they turned into the Calgary Centennials and maybe the first season and how they did that first season might have prompted the name besides the calendar as well. But before I get into talking about the Calgary Centennials, if you want to see the last episode that I did for episode 7, I always put a card when I do that. I talked about the time when we had two baseball teams, the Calgary Cardinals and the Calgary Expos, and yes they were affiliated with the St. Louis Cardinals and then the Montreal Expos who are now the Washington Nationals in Major League Baseball and I'm going to say those teams paved the way and the good person behind it, Russ Parker, who owned those teams was eventually the catalyst that brought in the Calgary Cannons and yes, I'll eventually talk about the Calgary Cannons in the series but much, much later and so follow along in the meantime in this playlist, as also with the inspiration of the Kyrie and Corral series, the Sea of Dead clothing, and that Chris Wilson started talking about Calgary jerseys from the past, and I think he also had some Calgary Centennials jersey. I didn't buy any during the Corral series because I couldn't afford to buy all the merchandise, but I definitely found a lot of photos, and with this team being all fairly modern and also fairly recent, it's easy to find information on it, so basically the Wikipedia's on the hockey database is where I find a lot of information and some graphics and there's also some notable NHL alumni so yeah that's just my intro so let's get going to the Calgary Centennials as they were rebranded for one game in the Calgary Edmund Corral series and you can see those two C's for Calgary Centennial and that you know that leaf that flower uh, was used for a Canada Centennial in 1967 for the Federation. The Canada 150 was kind of a modernized version of, of that as well. So that definitely was the inspiration of the name. The jerseys that the Calgary Hitman wore a couple years ago in the Hitman series, it looked exactly like the Chicago Blackhawks jerseys in terms of the striping, the colors. It's just, you know, replacing the logo. But uh, that's the, you know, gist that I got from the Calgary Hitman Corral series and they were the Calgary Centennials and I I also have the links to the videos in the, in the description below on my experience where I talked about it and definitely took a lot of pictures at the Stampede Corral. This is where the Calgary Centennials played and that stadium right now, the arena, is under demolition right now for the expansion of the 
Beamos there, which is definitely another reason why I had to do the Calgary Edmonton Corral series and get more in touch of Calgary history in the past. As I said, the Calgary Centennials played at the Stampy Corral, and the it was first originally called the Western Canadian Hockey League, which is now rebranded as the WHL because once American teams joined the league, they rebranded as the Western Hockey League, and definitely I say it was the first major junior hockey league team. To represent Calgary, which eventually got the Calgary Hitmen. And then, actually, I'll talk about the Calgary Wranglers, which will be in the next episode, which was the second team. So, uh, that's what I'll mention there as well. Originally, we were known as the Buffaloes. Separate episode for the AHL team, because there's an AHL team that was also called the Calgary Buffaloes. So, uh, I'll see that later in the series. If you look at my introduction video, that's where... I outline all the teams that I plan to talk about. And so far, I've been on plan in, in that description on that video where I outline the list of all the teams I plan to talk about. I'll put the video link in there for each episode that you want to go to, and obviously it's in the playlist. It's not like a sitcom where if you didn't watch episode two and now you're watching this, it's you have you won't fall along. It's you know you can jump in any time. So that's how I also planned it. So I would say when it comes to the uh, Calgary Centennials, as there were definitely many, many notable NHL alumni that I'll touch upon and definitely had some Calgary connections that is very known to hockey fans in Calgary and in the NHL. But you could say the three greatest players that played for the Calgary Centennials and during the Hitman Corral series, when the first game that they were the Calgary Centennials, they brought in oh, Denny Gear. Jerry Holland and Mike Rogers. They definitely were the probably say the greatest junior hockey league players to ever play for Calgary. As I think they have a, over a combined thousand points between the three players. So they celebrated them. And definitely when you look at the season by season record, the Calgary Centennials had definitely had some great seasons, but they didn't, you know, finish the deal and get to the league championship, which the Calgary Hitman has at least gone to the league championship to play for Memorial Cup on two separate occasions. But I'm going to say there's definitely still a great history with the Calgary Centennials. And lots of players that uh, played for the Centennials at one time definitely had pretty good NHL careers. But Danny Gear, Jerry Holland, and Mike Rogers. You might think that Mike Rogers' name sounds familiar because uh, he was the color commentator. For Peter Moore, at many occasions, including the 2004 Stanley Cup run. So yeah, that same Mike Rogers, who played for the New York Rangers and the Hartford Weathers, I believe there's another team. I'll look on some of the notable players when I get there on the list. So that is, I would say, the greatest Calgary Centennials, and they were brought up in the pregame ceremonies for that. So let's take a look at the season-by-season season record when it comes to the whole franchise, starting with the Buffaloes and the Centennials. So the season-by-season season record, well, the first season in 1966-67 was one of the founding teams of the league, the first seven teams of the league. They were the Calgary Buffaloes. I think with a record of four, four wins, they played 56 games. They were 4-47-5 for only 13 points. Captain Obvious will say they finished last in the league and did not make the playoffs. A little shock there. So that was the first season of the Calgary, they were called the Calgary Buffaloes. I couldn't find a logo on that team. I don't know, maybe they don't want to show that. So the next season, 1967-68, because 1967 in Canada, that was the 100th anniversary of Confederation. The team was rebranded as the Calgary Centennials. And in 60 games, they played uh, They played a little better, but they still had a rough season. Uh, they were 14, 40, and 5 for 35 points. They finished 10th overall. Did not make the playoffs, but things did get better for the Calgary Centennials after the first two seasons, but gradual improvement. And the beauty with uh, junior hockey, or the nature of junior hockey is that, as I've definitely seen with you know Calgary Edmund, or the case with the Centennials, you know, Danny Gear, Jerry Holland, and Mike Rogers, you get a few good seasons. 
with a core group of players that can carry the team. So the window's always short for teams in junior hockey to compete and win a championship before they move on to other hockey careers. So in 1968-69, they played 60 games. The Calgary Centennials continued on with their gradual improvement as they had their first winning season over 500. They were 31-28-1. And they had 63 points. They put them second in the league, but they lost in the semifinal of the of the playoffs. And then 1969 and 70, they were they played 60 games. They were 37, 22, and one, and they were first in the West Division as the league broke it up in divisions. But they did also lost in the semifinal that season. And then in 1970-71, now they played they play 66 games. The Centennials were 37, 22, and 7, but for 81 points, and they were second in the West, but they lost in the semifinal in the playoffs. 1971-72, this was the greatest season, regular season, for the Calgary Centennials, as in 68 games, they played 68 that season. They were 49, 16, and 3, for 101 points, put them first in the West, but they lost in the semifinal. Seeing a trend here. And then in 1972-73, in 68 games, they were 35-22-11 for 81 points. They were third in the West, but they lost in the quarterfinal as the league got bigger and there were more players and more rounds. 1973-74, they in 68 games, they were 41-18-9 for 91 points for first in the West. So they won three division titles, so that was their third division title for the whole time they were in Calgary. They actually lost the final league final that season so they got oh so close and then in 1974-75 as the core of the team left after you know those successful seasons the Calgary Centennials definitely took a drop back because it was kind of similar to what happened to the Calgary I mean, after 2010 and going into 2011 after all the core players graduated and moved on they were 11-51-8 and eight for 30 points they were six in the west and did not make the playoffs and then in 1975-76, they were a little better on 72 games. They were 22, 45 and 5, 49 points, put them 6 in the West. Did not make the playoffs. And then the last season that the Centennials were in Calgary was in 1976-77 in 72 games. They were 22, 34 and 15 for 59 points. They were fourth in the Central, but it was good enough to make the playoffs and they lost in the quarterfinal. So let's I'll just take a look at uh, these seasons that what happened in the playoffs, shall we? So the Calgary Centennials, they uh, in the quarterfinals, they defeated Swift Current. It says eight points to nothing, so I think it was a first team. First team to eight points wins the series. Uh, not quite sure how that worked back then. But in the semifinals, Edmonton beat Calgary nine points to five. So that was the 1968-69 playoffs for the Calgary Centennials, and then in 19, that was 1969, so 1970, when it comes to the playoffs, Calgary defeated Saskatoon. This was now the traditional best of seven. So Calgary beat Saskatoon four games to three in the quarterfinals, and then in the semifinals, once again, the uh, Edmonton beat Calgary four games to three with two ties. So Calgary lost to Edmonton again in 1970 in the playoffs, and then in 1971, it says they lost in the semifinal, so when it comes to the playoffs, in the quarterfinals, Calgary defeated Swift Current, it says three games another with two ties, I think that's, they, they didn't have sudden at the overtime then, however, Calgary once again lost to Edmonton four games to two in the semifinals in 1971, damn, Edmonton always seems to have to beat Calgary in the playoffs. I think they were. I think that Edmonton team, yeah, used to be called the Oil Kings. So that was 1971. 1972, when they were first in the division, well, Calgary defeated Madison Hat four games to two with a tie. And then in the semifinals, guess what? They lost to Edmonton four games to two, and that was the greatest regular season with 101 points. And then in that was 19, you know, 72. So 1973, when they said we lost in the quarterfinal. Calgary lost to Madison Hat four games to two, so that's 1973 playoffs. And then 1974, it says we lost in the final. Oops, 
Let's go back to the, that season because we didn't make the playoffs the following season. So 1974, when we lost in the final, Calgary finally beat Edmonton four games to one in the quarterfinals. Then the semifinals, Calgary defeated New Westminster. There was a team called New Westminster four games to one. However, in the WHL Championship to get to the Memorial Cup, Calgary lost to Regina in four straight in 1974. So that was the furthest that the Calgary Centennials got in the playoffs towards going into the Memorial Cup, but they lost to Regina. And I believe actually the Regina Pats, they won the Memorial Cup that year. And then the last season that the Calgary Centennials were in Calgary and in the playoffs for 1977, well, Calgary got swept by Madison Hat, or Calgary defeated Madison Hat four games to nothing in the uh, preliminary round, but Calgary lost to Lethbridge three games to two in the quarterfinals. So that was the end of the Calgary Centennials. And the Calgary Centennials, why they left Calgary, the team got sold. So as they said, 6 6 6 7, they were the Calgary Buffaloes. And then in 1967 to 1977, that was the Calgary Centennials. And then after the Calgary Centennials left, they went to Billings, Montana to become the Billings Bighorns. So the franchise was in Billings, Montana from 1977 to 1982. And then 1982-83, that franchise moved from Billings, Montana onto the island Vancouver Island in Nanaimo to be the Nanaimo Islanders from 1982 to 1983. And then they moved on to the mainland to be in New Westminster, a suburb of Vancouver in Metro Vancouver. And they were the New Westminster Bruins from 1983 to 1988. And then from 1988 on, the franchise is now the Tri-City Americans based out of Kennewick, Washington. And the interesting thing is, we can tie in with the Calgary Hitmen, is that in 2010, the second time that the Calgary Hitmen won the league championship to go to the Memorial Cup, the Calgary Hitmen actually defeated the Tri-City Americans in the league final in five games, and I was at that game five when they won the championship. So it was kind of interesting that you had the modern Calgary team beat the past Calgary team franchise that started off with the Buffaloes and Centennials in the league championship. So... That is the gist of the season by season when it comes to the uh, Calgary Centennials. And when the Calgary Centennials left, the Calgary didn't have to wait long to get junior hockey and a Western Hockey League team is that following season, which will be the next episode. We got the Calgary Wranglers, and I'll talk more in depth on the Calgary Wranglers in episode 9. So we didn't have much long to wait, and then there was a gap from... 1987 till 1995 between the Wranglers and now the Hitman and the Calgary Hitman has been in Calgary for 25 years so puts things in perspective so let's talk about some notable NHL alumni that were the Calgary Centennials colors who played some of their NHL hockey or eventually their NHL hockey their junior hockey here in Calgary this is what's listed on the Wikipedia page. Well, the first one goes alphabetical by last name, so we'll work our way down. Is you have Don Ashby, and Don Ashby played for the Calgary Centennials. He also played with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Colorado Rockies, and the Edmonton Oilers. So that was Don Ashby, and he was uh, what position did he play? He was a centerman. So that was Don Ashby. And then there was Jeff Bandura, who played for the New York Rangers in 1977. He was a defenseman. And then there was Wayne Bianchin, who was also a, he was a left winger. He played for Pittsburgh and Edmonton in the NHL. And he actually has an Italian descent there, Van Bianchian. I guess that sounds Italian there. And then there was Brian Carlin, who actually was from here. He actually played for the Los Angeles Kings. And he was... Uh, Trying to think, find the position. He was a. Uh, he only played five games in the NHL, and he was a left winger. So that was Brian Carlin, and then Glenn Cochran was the next player, who uh, was. Uh, he had a much longer career in the NHL. He was a defenseman. He played for the Philadelphia Flyers, 
Vancouver Canucks, Chicago Blackhawks, when there was two words, and the Edmonton Oilers. He actually played from 1978 to 1989. And then John Davidson. That name might be bring a bell to a lot of hockey fans, and actually he was an executive, and uh, he was an executive at many levels, a broadcaster. He's definitely big in the New York market. He was a goaltender. He actually is from Ottawa. But he played for the St. Louis Blues and the New York Rangers in his hockey career. So he's definitely synonymous with those two teams. So uh, I would say that's the first biggest name that you can say that uh, he was in the... Because he is in the Hockey Hall of Fame as a Hostry Field Memorial Award, which actually Peter Marr is won that award when he was inducted in 2006 for his broadcasting. So John Davidson, I could say, is the first big name that uh, you know many... Calgarians and hockey fans around the NHL we know he spent some time here and I remember many people were calling for him to be a general manager for the Calgary Flames at one time especially during the early 2000s but uh, it didn't work out but yeah John Davidson he was a Calgary Centennial then here was Ed Dick uh, he was a goaltender also as well and he actually played for the Vancouver Canucks in their early days from 1971 to 1975 so, Edwin Dick is his name. And then there was Len Freig, next player that uh, we'll talk about, who actually was a defenseman. He actually is from Blairmore, which is in the Crow's Nest Pass in the southwest corner of Alberta. He played for the Chicago Black Hawks and actually a few other defunct teams, including the Oakland Seals, the Cleveland Bears, and the St. Louis Blues from 1969 to 1986. So, he had a fairly long career. And now Danny Gear, the first notable player that uh, had a very predominant career in the junior hockey. He was a right winger. He played for Buffalo, Detroit, and Edmonton. Looking at his career stats, I mean, for the Centennials, the three seasons that he played, well, in 56 games in 1972, he had 27 points and 210 goals. 1973, in 65 games, he had 88 points, including 45 goals. And then in 1974, the last season, he was a centennial. In 65 games, he had 127 points and 68 goals. So that's insane numbers. However, his NHL career actually is pretty good. He played 827 games with Buffalo, Detroit, and Edmonton from 1974 till 1987. Now, he does not have a Stanley Cup, though, as he wasn't on the uh, Oilers. Well, he didn't play any games in the playoffs, so he might have actually at least got to take part in the celebration. But in 827 NHL games, he scored 320, 54 goals, 331 assists for 685 points and 1,285 penalty minutes, and then 64 NHL playoff games. He had 25 goals, 21 points, 46 points for 95 points, and then he played for uh, Canada Cups in 1976 and 81 for Canada. Played eight games, he had a goal, five assists, and six points. So Danny Gare had a pretty good uh, NHL career, not to those insane numbers that he posted up for the Centennials, but uh, as that he was drafted by the Buffalo Sabres 29th overall in 1974. He was also drafted by the Winnipeg Jets in the WHA in the 1974, but he played all of his hockey in the NHL. So that's the first of the three prominent Calgary Centennials. And then there's Rick Hoxson, who was a defenseman who played for the Hartford Whalers. Actually, he was drafted by the Flames, talking about the Atlanta Flames in 1976, and the Seattle Mariners, So, and he's from Madison Hat. Although he only played six games for the Hartford Whalers, but that's a notable NHL alumni. Now here's Jerry Holland, the second uh, of the two prominent Calgary Centennials. As he actually is also from Alberta, from Beaver Lodge, which uh, I briefly drove through there when I went to Dawson Creek, as it's near Grand Prairie. He was a left winger. And he was drafted 50th overall by the New York Rangers in 1974 and the Cincinnati Singers of the WHA in 1974, 21st overall. He only played four seasons from 1974 to 1978, so his NHL career was not as long. But with the Calgary Centennials, well, actually he was first with the Kamloops Rockets in the BC Junior Hockey League. 34 games, he had 61 points, including 41 goals. So his first season with the Calgary Centennials in 33 games, he had 30 points, including 17 goals. But then the next two seasons in 73, 1972-73, he 
He played 67 games. He had 105 points, including 51 goals. And then 1974, his last season with the uh, Calgary Centennials before he went to the professional ranks. In 67 games, he had 120 points, including 55 goals. However, his NHL numbers, he definitely didn't have as long of an NHL career as he only played 37 games in the NHL with 8 goals, 4 assists, or 12 points in 6 penalty minutes, and he did not play any Stanley Cup playoff games. So some players that are predominant in junior hockey sometimes does not always translate at the national hockey level. It did, I would say, for Danny Gear. He had a nice long career, but not so for Jerry Holland. Another player that also is highlighted here is Ron Homoki, if I said it right. He's from Hazleton, and he only played one game for the Vancouver Canucks in 1972, so not much of a career there after the Calgary Centennials, as he did play four seasons with the Calgary Centennials. And another sign that a player does not do as well sometimes, in, or does very well in junior hockey, but not so in professional rank, his last season with the Calgary Centennials in 1972, he in 68 games, he had 95 points and 33, 33 goals, so... Uh, Definitely, uh, and it says here on his Wikipedia that a monkey who now works as a missionary with street kids in the Philippines. So, uh, some players definitely go on interesting careers. And then there was a Doug Horrible who was a forward who played for the Calgary Centennials. He was, he also, he only played for the Kansas City Scouts in the NHL. Now that team's defunct, but he was drafted by the New York Rangers. And then there was Kevin Crook, who played for the Centennials. The defenseman, he played for the Colorado Rockies from 1978 to 79. Definitely that team was a mess, but he's from Gold Lake, Alberta. Many of these players, you know, come within the Western Canada. And then there's Doug Luxier, who was a board that played for the Centennials. He played for the Chicago Blackhawks, Winnipeg Jets, and Pittsburgh Penguins from 1978 to 1983. And then there's Craig Levy. Who's from Calgary? He played uh, for the Winnipeg Jets, the Minnesota North Stars, St. Louis Blues, and Vancouver Canucks, as he originally was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in 1979. He had a nice long career. He played from 1979 to 1992. And then there's Bob Liddington, who was a uh, who played for the let's say what position he played for. I couldn't see the position. Oh, well, he's a left winger. He played for. 13 season NHL with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and there was the Chicago Cougars, Houston Arrows, Denver Spurs, Ottawa Service, and the Phil the Phoenix Roadrunners, all in the World Hockey Association. So he had a blended career, and he's from Calgary. And then there was Daryl Maggs, who was a defenseman that played all over as well from 10 years professionally with the Chicago Blackhawks, the California Golden Seals, and then he played some time in the WHA with the Chicago Cougars, Denver Spurs, Ottawa Civics, Indianapolis Razors. Since nice stingers in the back in the NHL with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, you might not know Lanny. Lanny McDonald was a Calgary Centennial. However, he only played six games with the Calgary Centennials. We know that he's a right winger, one of the greatest right wingers to ever play for the Calgary Flames, greatest flame in the early days. He actually played most of his junior hockey career with the Madison Hat Tigers, but he did play his first six games with the Calgary Centennials, so Calgary hockey fans then got to see an early look of Lanny McDonald, and he was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1973, fourth overall, and he was also drafted with the Cleveland Crusaders in 1973, tenth overall. But as you know, he played most of his hockey with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and then briefly with the Colorado Rockies, and then eventually the Calgary Flames. So you might not know him that Lanny McDonald actually played for the Calgary Centennials only six games, but that's worth the note. I know he played most of his career with the Madison Hat Tigers. Another player is Grant Mulvey, who was a from Merritt. He's a right winger. He played for the Chicago Blackhawks and the New Jersey Devils, and he played ten seasons, seventy-four to eighty-four. Now here's another notable player that played for the Calgary Centennials, Bob Nystrom. Is he definitely is known for being a player that he played for the right wing? Says he's born in Stockholm, but he mostly is known for playing with the New York Islanders from 1972 to 1986. He was 33rd overall in 1972. He was also known for the guy that scored the Stanley Cup winning goal for the first of four 
Stanley Cups that the New York Islanders won. And Bob Nystrom is the father of Eric Nystrom, who actually started his career with the Calgary Flames in 2002 when we drafted him. So there's definitely some Calgary connection with Bob Nystrom. He was a little part of the New York Islanders dynasty that played with the Calgary Centennials. And we had his son, and Eric Nystrom, who played with the Calgary Flames or started his career with the Calgary Flames. So that's, I think, another notable name that I would say played for the Calgary Centennials. And there's Harvey Hoxha, who was a left winger. He briefly played with the Washington Cavs in 1979-1983. He's actually from Lethbridge, Alberta. And then I'm just working my way down, and there's Gary Riesling. He played left winger. He played for the Washington Capitals and the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he was actually undrafted, but he played 12, 10 seasons in the NHL, and he's from Saskatoon. So definitely probably more impressive that he played in the NHL and was not drafted. Now, here's the last player of the three in terms of Mike Rogers. As you know, he's from Calgary. Was only five foot nine, and he played uh, many teams. I mean, Mike Rogers, I would say, also is synonymous for being the color commentary for uh, Peter Moore during, especially in the 2004 run, as he's worked with Peter Moore on the radio. And the fact that he was part of the big three with the Danny Gear and Jerry Holland. As in the W, he played in both leagues, the WHA and the National Hockey League. As he was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in 1974-77 overall. And he was also drafted by the Edmonton Oilers in 1974 in the WHA. So he played for the Edmonton Oilers and the New York England Whalers of the WHA. And then when the WHA agreed to merge with the NHL. So he played for the Hartford Weathers, the New York Rangers, and the Edmonton Oilers in the NHL. And then his career stats, well, if we look at the Calgary Centennials, in 1971-72, his first season, he had 66 games played. He had 57 points, including 27 goals. And then 1972-73, in 67 games, he had 112 points, including 54 goals. And then 1973-74, in 66 games, he scored 140 points, including 67 goals. So the Calgary Centennials definitely went to to score goals in the early to mid-1970s with Danny Gare, Jerry Holland, and Mike Rogers. And then when it comes to his career totals professionally, well, the NHL and WHA, they don't acknowledge each other. They don't blend the stats, so they're separate. So when it comes to the WHA... In 396 games, he has 145 goals, 222 assists for 367 points. And then he played in 46 WHA playoffs games for 13 goals, 21 points for 34 points. And in the NHL, he played 484 games. He scored 202 goals, 317 assists for 519 points. So Mike Rogers still had a nice long career for the... Uh, in the NHL, and actually he had three straight seasons that he scored 100 points in 1979 and 80. He had 105 points in 80 games, including 4-4 goals with Hartford. Then 1980-81, he had 105 points in 80 games, including 40 goals. And then when he went to the New York Rangers in 1981-82, in 80 games, he played, he scored 103 points, including 38 goals. So uh, I would say other than uh, Jerry Holland, Danny Gare, and Mike Rogers, as productive as they were for the Calgary Centennials. Had a pretty good professional career, if you ask me. So I've so got a few more players to talk about. you got Randy Rota, who was a, who was a center and left wing. He played 10, 11 seasons in the NHL. He's uh, played for the Montreal Canadiens, Los Angeles Kings, Kansas City Scouts, Colorado Rockies, and the Edmonton Oilers. And then you got Rick Shinsky, who was a left center, and he played for the Cleveland Barons and the St. Louis Blues. And then, then you got Roy Somer, who played, he actually is an American center who was from Oakland. He definitely played all over the place. I mean, he was drafted 101st overall by the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1977. He had a 10-year professional career, but he played for the Muskokan Lumberjacks in the International Hockey League, and then the Indianapolis Checkers in the International Hockey League, and then the Maine Mariners in the American Hockey League, and then the Wichita Wind in the CHL, that's that, that's, I think that's the Central Hockey League. 
He actually did play with the Empton Oilers in the NHL, and that's his only time that he played in the NHL, but he got the Houston Apollos and the CHL, the Grand Preps All Owls in the International Hockey League, the Spokane Flyers in the Pacific Hockey League, and then the Dayton slash Grand Rapids Owls in the International Hockey League in the Saginaw Gears. So he definitely was all over the place, and actually he is the uh, associate coach with the San Jose Sharks right now. So he's still involved in the NHL. And then you have Brian Spencer, who was a left winger. He played for the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, Buffalo Sabres, and Pittsburgh Penguins. And he's also he actually is from Riviera Beach, Florida. Or no, that's where he died. He was from Fort St. James, British Columbia. But uh, he played from 1969 to 1980. So rest in peace. And then Mike Toll, third last player. He's from right there. He was a centerman, and he was drafted by the Edmonton Oilers in 1979. 105th overall, and that definitely was a stacked draft when you look at that. Because he always definitely picked up a lot of dynasty in that draft, but Mike Toll was not one of them. And then the second last player was Perry Turnbull. He was a left winger. He played, he mentioned, 608 games for St. Louis, Montreal, and Winnipeg. And he was actually drafted second overall by the St. Louis Blues. I think, well, actually, Rob Ramage was drafted first overall by the Colorado Rockies in 1979. And there were a few other great players that were drafted in 1979 that the Oilers picked. You can look at that draft. And then the last player um, that was notable NHLer is Jimmy Watson. And he was a defenseman who played for the Philadelphia Flyers in his playing career from 1972 to 1982. And he was drafted 39th overall by the Philadelphia Flyers. And I believe he won some Stanley Cups. So, he, yeah, with the Philadelphia Flyers during his time when the Flyers won their back-to-back -back Cups. So, uh... Definitely some interesting notable names, but I definitely wouldn't have thought that uh, Ian McDonald actually played for the Calgary Centennials, and I knew about the big three from the uh, Calgary Hitman Corral series. So that's definitely the gist of the Calgary Centennials in the 10 seasons that they were in Calgary. Definitely some predominant names that played for the Calgary Centennials that had some Pretty good NHL careers, and that's the beauty of the Western Hockey League is players you watch then, you never know who you could be watching in the future winning, you know, championships and doing big things in the National Hockey League. So what do you think of the Calgary Centennials? What do you think of any memories or any interesting players that you would think, oh, that player didn't, I didn't know he played for the Calgary Centennials or, you know, any memories that you have to share? So, uh... That is episode 8 in my Remember the Calgary series, and I already touched upon that episode 9. I will be talking about the Calgary Rangers, which was the team that followed the Calgary Centennials when it moved to Billings to be the Billings Billinghorns, and then eventually it was in Nanaimo, New Westminster, and now the Tri-City Americans. So that is this team, so it's a Calgary sports team in the past, but it's not totally defunct as the team still exists as it is. And then, of course, in the video, share some interesting relics that I found on the hockey database, some programs, and an idea of what uh, the Calgary Centennials looked like then. And if I find any good pictures that I took from the Calgary Trail series, I might throw that in as well. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, Home of the Flames, Hitman, Earthnecks, and Stampeders, and formerly the Calgary Centennials, there will be also called the Calgary Sense, go Sense, go. I mostly talk Calgary sports on my channel, you know, recapping games and stories, and been doing this for Remember the Calgary series, and we'll look at some Calgary sports teams from the past, but I also do personal blogs, attempt to comedy, and I also do share my experience and say I'm on the road or at a sport event, including, you know, the event Corral series. So if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch too, follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey. You know what you need to do, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, I also have my other social media links down in the description below there. So as I will say, let's go Centennials, or go Sense Go, and I'll see you in the next video, and enjoy some relics that I found on the hockey database for the first of three junior hockey teams there at St. Calgary, is the Centennials. Then I'll talk about the Wranglers in the next episode, and then the Hitman that we have right now today. So, I'll see you then.